today how to turn this into this with a bunch of these. Let's learn physics. First, with a meter stick and a ball, get a good video of projectile motion. Don't move the camera. Get good light, a contrasting background, and make sure that all motion is the same distance from the camera. Then you want to open your video physics app, top right corner. The next screen shows your list of experiments. Click on the plus sign in the top left hand corner. You can practice with sample videos, choose an existing video from your video files, or take a video here. All videos taken here are stored in your photos. I'll choose an existing video from my video files. You can play it to make sure it's the video you want, then press use. The experiments button on the left allows you to go back to your list of experiments. We'll be using the points button and the origin and scale button soon. And there's a graph button and a share button on the right. At the bottom of the screen are the video controls and you can step forward and backward frame by frame. You want to start tracking the motion of the object as soon as it becomes a projectile, so scrub forward in the video until you get to that point. Then use a two finger zoom to see everything better, and center the crosshairs on that very first point of motion. Then give it a quick tap. Theoretically you can auto track with the button on the bottom right, but I can't get it to work. The video steps forward frame by frame after each tap and you want a little red dot at every frame for the object. By now you have some bad dots and you want to erase them. You can hold on the dots and hope that the delete option shows up or just start over again. Click that plus tab again in the experiments window and start over again with that same video. More dots and more dots and more dots later and you've tracked the object to the end. Now you want to set origin and scale, so click on that button. Those two big circles connected by a line are for your scale. I'll use that for the meter stick. You can use it for any object of known size at the same distance from the camera as the motion. Drag one circle to one end of the object and the other circle to the other end of the object and then put in the value of the length of the object. While you're there, you can take the origin and put it at the beginning of the motion. And if you need to adjust the orientation of the X, Y axis, do so here. Once you have all the motion points where they should be, and you have the origin and the scale all set, you can then check the graphs by clicking on the graph tab at the right. The first of three graphs is a Y position versus X position. You can see it's labeled in meters. This shows the corresponding X and Y positions at the same times. Page two of the graph shows the horizontal position versus time and the horizontal velocity versus time. The top graph kind of shows what we expect. The horizontal velocity stays constant since there's no net force in that direction. But the bottom graph shows an increasing horizontal velocity over time. That's probably because the ball gets closer to the camera as it flies through the air. The third page of graphs shows the vertical motion. Vertical position versus time and vertical velocity versus time. From the position time graph you can read the time it took to get to the top and the maximum height. From the velocity time graph you can read velocities and times and find the slope and that slope should be G. If you want to inspect your graphs more closely just take a screenshot and view it in photos. For export, if you choose video with points, this is the video you get. You can also export a data file to Vernier's graphical analysis app. Vernier's video physics app really allows us to do things with motion that we were not easily capable of before. I highly recommend it.